I think season three of the Tudors is a little bit more dark than season two or even season one. We begin the story this year in the aftermath of the slaughter, which was bloody and terrible. Jonathan Rhys Myers returns as the tyrannical King Henry VIII in a powerful new season of the Showtime original series, The Tudors. Let us prosecute with absolute diligence all those who stubbornly stand against us. King Henry has pushed the Catholic Church and the Boleyns out of England. He's much darker. He's much more dangerous. He wants power. He enjoys this power, and it's almost psychotic. But his brutality forces the members of the royal court to choose, fight for their beliefs, or surrender to the will of the king. You woke up in the morning in those days, and you did not know whether you were going to be your head on a block that evening. <laughs> Henry had always loved Mary, but felt threatened. She had a pretty hard time in two. She wasn't allowed to see her mom, and her dad didn't want to have any contact with her, so she struggled severely. It gives me more pleasure than I can say to see you reconciled with your father. Jane Seymour realized that this was a daughter that needed her father. And whether he liked it or not, Henry needed his daughter. She could have seen Jane Seymour as a threat almost. But their relationship warms throughout the third season, which is so lovely. I'm very grateful to His Majesty and to you. As the brother of His Majesty's beloved wife, it is His Majesty's pleasure today to create you Viscount Beecham of Hash in Somerset. Your Majesty, I am deeply honored. Edward Seymour is the eldest brother of the Seymour family, the eldest son. You're watching a typical Tudor story of a meteoric Ascent, which you can only have if you're close to the king. This character of Edward Seymour is something of a wild card because we start to become aware that he might have an agenda of his own, but we don't know what it is. He starts to become a more imposing, commanding presence. Oh, God, save me! Oh, God, help me! God's sake, have some dignity. No! No, oh, I don't want to die! Do you know who I am? You're also Francis Bryant. I've heard about you. Any king who's going to rule in the early 1500s is going to need people like Sir Francis Bryan. His immorality means that he can do exceptionally cruel things. He's not to be trusted by anyone. I want to know where he is. You are going to tell me. If this was the Godfather, he'd be that secret guy that, you know, comes in from Sicily and just does what he's told and gets paid handsomely for it. You know, he's Luca Brasi. Were you not a spy once? Indeed. Perhaps you could revisit some of your old skills. Last year, Cromwell had to turn on his own power base, the Boleyns, because of Anne Boleyn's unpopularity with the king and because Cromwell does ultimately what the king requires. I want her dead! I want it over with! Finished! And so Cromwell followed orders and had them removed from court. Season three, he comes up against the forces of those who feel that he is completely wrong, and what he's imposing from above is, in fact, a kind of tyranny. We have come here in great haste to tell you that a great part of the North, as well as parts of Lincolnshire, have risen in sudden rebellion against His Majesty. And what do these rebels say that they want? They intended to kill you, my Lord Cromwell. What Cromwell pushed through Parliament in the 1530s was the most radical series of reforms in British history. They'd smashed the Catholic Church's power, they'd confiscated the land, they were destroying the monasteries. The biggest mistake that Cromwell made was that he allowed the dissolution of the monasteries, he told Henry that the people wanted it, the people didn't want it, and Henry got blamed. The King of England is the most cruel and abominable tyrant. He must be overthrown by force. Forward, in pain of death, in God's name, forward! Sir John Constable was a, a real member of the working classes, someone who personified what the rebellion was about. He is prepared to challenge the king. He is the spirit of the revolution. John Constable, do you deny that you acted as a leader and captain of this rebellion? No, and I'm proud of it. But he realizes that in order to get 30,000 men to fight on his side, he's going to need some clever, educated men to help him with that. And that's why he goes to Robert Ars, the commons. They are prepared to fight, but they need captains to lead them. As a Catholic in England at the time, knowing that the whole fabric of what he believed in was being destroyed around him, and it's a hugely emotional response that he has to it. 
this man loves his king. What he does not love is the butchery that's taking place in the king's name by other people. With God on our side, Mr. Ask, we shall prevail. People are fascinated by a time where there were rules and your life was much more, in a sense, fragile. It was all about political gain and greed, and it was about playing off one person against the other. The people of that society are no different than people of today. It's a lesson in uh, humanity. I am very impressed. It has, to me, been a pleasure doing this part. It's just an incredible piece of TV. See what happens when royalty and rebels collide in season three of The Tudors. I'll teach these bastard ingrates a fearful, bloody lesson in slaughter. Everything will change.